Here's a big surprise from one of our co-sponsors of Crucial Choice. Five scholarships for five lucky students valued at $10,000 US dollars each. For any student who wants to enroll in one of the foundation or undergraduate programs featured in this show, terms and conditions do apply. Send us an email at choice at crucialchoice.org and write scholarship in the subject line. Add your name, contact information, and country where you'd like to study. A big warm welcome from me, Shane Phillips, to all the viewers of Crucial Choice, the only show of its kind that looks at careers and higher education, both of which are crucial decisions when you're ending high school and wondering what you want to do with the rest of your life. Many youngsters wonder how much money they'll be making when they graduate. It's not something to be ashamed of because money is important. Someone once told me I'd rather be in a career where money's chasing me than I'm chasing money. So your career is extremely important, as is the university or college you attend. Today's episode is about business and management, about the future gurus of the boardroom, the future Sundar Pichai's and Satya Nadellas of tomorrow. And like you, I'm very excited to meet these young, brilliant minds. Ahana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Anisha, welcome. Thank you. Shane, welcome to Thank Crucial you. Choice. So, um, wh where, are you, where were you born? Where are you from? How long have you been in Dubai for? I was born in New Delhi, which is in India, and I've been in Dubai for around seven years now. And Anisha? I was born in Maharashtra, which is a state in India, and I've been in Dubai for almost 16 years now. I was born and raised here in Dubai, so... Ahana, so you picked business management, did you? Uh, yes, but technically I hope to pursue consulting. Okay, and which school did you get into? I'm going to uh, Indiana University's Kelly School of Business this fall. Well, I think the upside of consulting, you get to work with different industries and mm -hmm. a variety of projects. The downside is you're selling your time. Right. And you only have so much to sell. So it becomes very tough to scale the business. Yeah, I don't know how scalable it is, but um, I hope to see if it's for me because I can be very picky and uh, that's why, again, I said I'm going to the U.S. because it gives me so much flexibility. Uh, I also do enjoy human resources and marketing, so let's see what the future holds for me. Anisha? I'll you? be going to Leeds University in U.K. and I'll be pursuing business management. Um, why did you choose business management? It's always been into me. I've been seeing it since childhood. I've been seeing my grandfather, my father get into this. And uh, I think it interests me a lot. Business has always just been there. My dad does it, my granddad did it, my, gra my great granddad did it, so just yeah. So your father is an entrepreneur? Yeah. So when you looked at um, you know, getting into your university, what was the process that you had to go through? I went to a uh, college counselor and he gave me a list of universities and he gave me the option to choose whichever one I wanted to apply to, or whichever one I really liked and I did a lot of research. There was a lot of thorough research involved in the process. And uh, at the end of the day, I chose universities that were very welcoming and very interesting to me because they, at the end of the day, you, do want, you want to spend four years somewhere where you feel at home, but still feel uh, challenged. So I decided to go to Indiana University because they had a very stellar business program, but on top of that, they seemed to be a very welcoming and inviting university. I had to do the SAT, which is a requirement for uni universities in America. And uh, I had to do um, IELTS for some universities as well because I have an Indian passport. So, yeah. Okay. Anisha, what, what was your... I was actually confused in between the US and UK. So I did give SAT as well. I applied to a few universities in the US. But uh, it had always been my dream to go to UK. So eventually I applied in UK, I got into a university and I'll be going there. 
If somebody wants to go to a top school, where should their SAT or IELTS scores be? In SAT, now they've bring the scores down to 1600, and I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Back yeah, then, 1600, yeah, yeah, 1600. Back then, it was 2400. So a minimum of 1900, maybe, for the top 10 or top 20 universities where it's a requirement. Yeah, but I guess now it'd be 1400 yeah, plus. I guess, yeah. Because they've changed the whole uh, style of the SAT. You need to really understand the types of questions they ask and um, how you should really train your mind. Because at the end of the day, it's not a test of your intellect, it's a tr- test of how cap- uh, capable your mind is for a four hour exam. Because the SAT is three hours and 45 minutes. So at the end, you have to do a lot of different sections at the same time and the same go. So you really need to train your mind to understand the questions they ask and how to prepare yourself to really stay calm in stress. Anisha, what was your study schedule like? Would you study two hours a day, 10 hours a day? Yeah, basically I didn't have a lot of time before my paper because I joined the classes, uh, I think three weeks before my paper and that was a really short duration so yeah i would spend a lot of time and um the thing in SAT is that you have english as well as math and i wasn't that good at math back then or even now so i really put in all my time into studying math be it four hours six hours and yeah you really need to work hard for that shane where are you planning to go? i want to apply to america so maybe somewhere in new york or boston okay and so anywhere else besides the uk or us that you would consider? I did apply to SPGEN, which is an Indian institute, and they have a global management program. Uh, a lot of my friends actually from my high school uh, are going to Europe because they're European, but I think a big like benefit to go to Europe, you get a lot of exposure, and secondly, a lot of the education is subsidized because the governments pay for the education, so it is very, very uh, cheap compared to the US and even UK. So that was another option. A lot of my friends are going to Australia as well. So all over the place, but again, I have a lot of family in America, so it made sense to be at home there. Uh, What's the cost to study overseas? It depends on your university, but I know for sure that America is the most costly. My university comes around to $50,000 a year, and it's actually one of the cheapest I applied to. So it depends on what your family's budget is, and if you get scholarships. I know America is very big on scholarships. So if you earn a scholarship, you can actually go completely free to the U.S. Well, as Hana said earlier, I mean, it depends on the university. So I really don't know. I just know it's probably more expensive than the ones in Europe. Oh, it depends on the location in America. I know a lot of metropolitan cities like L.A. and New York have very, very high cost of living. Here's a big surprise from one of our co-sponsors of Crucial Choice. Five scholarships for five lucky students valued at 10,000 US dollars each. For any student who wants to enroll in one of the foundation or undergraduate programs featured in this show, terms and conditions do apply. Send us an email at choice at crucialchoice.org and write scholarship in the subject line. Add your name, contact information, and country where you'd like to study. Welcome back to Crucial Choice, the only show on careers and higher education. Before the break, we heard from three young future management graduates on what they want to study and where they want to study it. Coming up, we're going to learn what they know about management and what qualities they think they need to be successful in business and life. Ahana, why do you want to be a manager? Well, I think it's actually a requirement for every type of role. To some degree or the other, you have to manage a group of people in order to you know, excel to the next stage. I think really to understand people and how they work and what's their strengths and weaknesses, they won't come up and tell you exactly what it is. You really have to infer and understand what they are and what they are good at and what they aren't. So um, I think management and being a manager is actually crucial to every job. Anisha, what are the dream companies you would like to work for once you graduate? There are a lot of them. First of all, for me, I mean, being a CEO of Microsoft or a company like Google would be something really big. And that would be my goal. Like, if I keep that as my goal, I would obviously work towards that. But being realistic, um, if I plan to do my master's from Harvard or Oxford, once I have that title of them, I think the jobs or the companies might as well just come up to me. Shane, 
How much money do you think you'll be making once you graduate? After undergrad, I'll probably do an internship. So I wouldn't be making that much, maybe five figures. And then post-grad? Post-grad, hopefully six-figure, or I might not even work for anyone. I might just start my own thing. I would like to be more of an entrepreneur then. Do you know what field you want to be an entrepreneur in? Uh, something to do with sports, probably. Ahana, do you know what industry you want to go into? I don't know exactly which industry, but I know that I want to be creative in my job. So. And Shane, do you know what industry you want to go so into? So I did speak about sports and maybe even investment banking. Why would you choose investment banking? I don't know, it just seems like something I would enjoy. Like, I've read stuff about investment banking, banking and it just looks more interesting. I mean, you see different companies, different uh, businesses, and you just you have to decide on whether or not to invest in them or not. I mean, it's your judgment. You're looking at the future, trying to decide what's going to make it big. So, What do you think are the traits that you need to be successful? I would say self-motivation is a big um, point for that. I mean, if you can't motivate yourself, how are you going to motivate anyone to work for you? You could be the smartest person in the world, but if you don't have the discipline to work hard and really achieve the dream, then you're not going to get it. But also at the same time, I think you need to be very smart about how you work. I don't think nowadays it's a lot about working hard. It's about working smart and managing your time. So time management is, I think, one of the biggest aspects in being successful. Ahana, when you look back at the process, do you have, would you have done things differently when you look at the application process or do you have any advice for someone who's going into the application process now? Um, when I was looking at universities, for example, I was very uh, obsessed with the prestige and the name of the university rather than the content and what they offered me. So for someone who's actually going into the application process this fall and looking at universities already, I would advise them to really understand what the university has to offer rather than its name or its prestige because at the end of the day of course name and prestige will take you far but what you will benefit from the university can actually really help you because undergraduate degrees are there to really give you the experience and the knowledge to go far in life uh, rather than the prestige and its name so yeah i would have done that differently anisha is there anything you would have done differently or what's your advice yeah. would be? Be sure about where you're going and then only decide whether you want to spend your time in giving your SCTs or your IELTS or you want to spend your entire time in getting your school grades. Also for the parents, I would say that don't really force your children to go to a particular place. Let them go where they want to, let them pursue what they want to. Shani? I haven't actually applied yet but just until now, I mean I've done ACT, I've done SAT, wasted a lot of time, I have a few regrets. My main regret is using my phone too much when I should have been studying. I mean, nothing's gonna happen in that one hour, two hours that you've been studying for that you can't see later on your phone. Don't waste your time. Focus on what you need to do at the time and not social media or YouTube. I mean, nothing's gonna change in two hours. It's all gonna be there. And then there's also um, balance. You can't just work. This is to parents especially. Your children can't just work. They need to have fun, let them, let them loose, have their time off. So eight hours a day, maybe that doesn't suit them. I mean, I can only study maybe four hours a day. Doesn't mean that I'm doing less than the eight hours a day because maybe someone else is doing eight hours a day but only really doing two hours of work. So I would say just balance it out, have fun, but also do your work. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for coming out on Crucial Choice and we really appreciate having you. Well, thanks. It's nice to be on TV. We are sure this short discussion with these youngsters has shed some light on management as a career choice. Coming up, we'll be sharing our tricks and tips for getting a leg up on your competition. So stay tuned for some insightful info. Here's a big surprise from one of our co-sponsors of Crucial Choice. Five scholarships for five lucky students valued at 10,000 US dollars each for any student who wants to enroll in one of the foundation or undergraduate programs featured in this show. Terms and conditions do apply. Send us an email at choice at crucialchoice.org and write scholarship in the subject line. Add your name, contact information, and country where you'd like to study. Hello and welcome back to Crucial Choice. Choosing your higher education, your university, and your major are surely extremely important decisions. After all, the university you choose will become the bedrock of your career. 
And when choosing business studies, you should choose an environment which is flush with internship opportunities. Australia is one country which is offering international students plenty of opportunity to both study and work there. To give us more on this interesting trend is Dr. Jeff Gosper from the Charles Stewart University Study Centers. Dr. Jeff, welcome to Crucial Choice. Hi Shane and hi to all the students there in the, with you. Jeff, what is it about CSU that attracts so many international students? CSU is about developing career ready graduates. It's about developing the skills and the abilities to go out there and get the job. We're really pleased that CSU has a fantastic rate of employment. It's one of the best in Australia. And so we're really proud of our support program and career development program. We have in-course internships where you go out there into the industry and participate and become a productive person in, in a real life environment. We have post-study internships available for search to students in certain courses, all helped by a dedicated career development manager. So really the experience at CSU is one of transitioning in, being able to be successful in your studies, building skills which make you a professional and ultimately land that great job and build that great career. Jeff, what about working in Australia? Are students allowed to work and earn money in their spare time while they're studying? One of the other really important things about Australia is whilst you're studying, you can actually work part-time. This is called work rights. It's really important that international students can integrate into the culture, earn money, develop their professional skills whilst they're actually studying. Really important. A lot of countries don't allow that. But more importantly, if you get a visa into Australia and do a degree, you can actually stay for two years afterwards, be employed, gain professional experience, and really get an international flavor to your CV. Jeff, where are your study centers located? The CSU study centers are right in the middle of the city, where the jobs are, where the action is. Living is a lot easier. We're really pleased that we have great locations. We have great facilities right in the heart of the city. Thank you, Dr. Jeff Gosper. Now, let's take a look at the Northern Hemisphere Bellerby's College Foundation Program in the United Kingdom. Bellerby's Colleges are located in Oxford, Cambridge, Brighton, and London, the business capital where you may want to consider studying business. Bellaby's College London is a specialist business college. We take students from the age of 15 on our one-year GCSE programme right through to the pre-masters level. We specialise in the business subjects which include business, economics, finance, marketing and of course preparing students for their English. All our students are international, they come from all over the world and it's really important that they enjoy their experience with us, settle in well and thrive. Students are quite geographically sensitive and, and, and those that do come to, to Bellaby's London you know, usually do have a plan. As soon as students arrive we try and help them settle in. We have a very experienced team, teaching and welfare staff, many of whom have lived overseas themselves and really understand what settling in with a new culture can mean. A good number of them think in terms of London. They want to be here, the city excites them. It's common knowledge that English education is the best education in the world. So I've searched the internet and I've just like found Bellaby College. They want to study here, they want to go to London universities. If they can, they'll try and get jobs in London. We heard that London was an awesome place to live in. People here are very nice and they offer the courses that we want to study as well. That was the reason why I chose Bellabees. That was Bellabees College in London, one of the most vibrant cities in the world and a fantastic place to study business. A little closer to home, Manipal University in Dubai has some great programs for undergraduates, and postgraduates if you wanted to stay right here in United Arab Emirates. Getting a business management degree from Manipal University of Dubai is a great way to start your career. And many of our students go on to careers in, in, to, in the fields of finance, in marketing, logistics and banking. As part of our program, students also undertake an, an internship and uh, with some leading companies in the region 
and many of our students go on to, to have a career with those particular companies. We also try and balance the academic side with the with practical business experience and we encourage leading business people and entrepreneurs to come in and give guest lectures into the classroom. Besides that we also try to give students an international experience. So we encourage students to do a semester abroad with our partner universities or perhaps undertake a shorter study tour across some of the countries. We also have leading classrooms, smart room equipped. We use case-based teaching analysis and uh, encourage students to, to utilise some of the leading facilities we have at the library and other resources. Our faculty is also very leading and we use some, uh, some international visiting faculty from time to time to give people an opportunity to, to uh, get exposed to international environment. And lastly, we make sure that uh, you have opportunities to further your studies through masters or doctoral studies. I'm doing my BBA specializing in marketing. Being a science student, I was quite skeptical when I came here and took up BBA, but the professors here have given me a one-to-one -one attention and made my journey pretty smooth. So trust me you, if you come to Manipal, it's just going to be amazing. So do think about coming to Manipal University of Dubai if you're thinking about doing management studies, thinking about doing your BBA or your BCom studies. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Crucial Choice. We hope we're showing you all the careers you want to see. And please email us at choice at crucialchoice.org and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And so that's it for this time. A big goodbye from me and the team at Crucial Choice.